Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Would you all do me a favor and give it up like you actually appreciate their work, our worship team, Bruce, the students. We, we had students who were risking life and limb to get back here tonight with all this crazy, magical, wintry weather that's going on. So we're grateful that you guys got back safely and that we could all worship together. Hmm. Y'all excited about the weather? I am not, but that's all right. In those days, there was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. This report, or some derivative of it, is scattered throughout the book of Judges. Since the fall semester, when this series began, if you've been around and you've taken notice in every one of the sermons that I've preached for this service called The Gathering, you've heard me repeat that refrain. In those days, there was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. Tonight, to facilitate you committing that refrain to memory. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, we had some, some young men who distributed some paraphernalia, some trinkets to you. You you guys have some trinkets that you have in your hand? I don't, some, some eyeball little things. Okay. All right. Before you, you have some plastic slinky eyeballs and you have some finger puppet eyeball toy key rings, if you will, Um, not to be outdone by some giant uh, beach balls that are distressed eyeballs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's one up there, too, in the balcony. I don't want y'all to feel left out. (laughs) Being the, the cheap and silly items that they are, I know, I know, it's, it's highly unlikely that these items will become your most prized possessions. Odds are that uh, you will not smuggle them into a safe deposit box somewhere or revere them as heirlooms to be passed down your family tree. They are, after all, just plastic party favors. Nevertheless, I, I want to encourage you to place these items somewhere, anywhere that is visible in your life, maybe a, a high traffic area in your life, a, a windowsill or a door handle. Maybe you could hang it from your car's rear view mirror. Maybe you want to tape it to your wall or You could go out on a limb and keep it in your pocket, maybe, or you could put it by your laptop, or you could place it by your cell phone, since y'all are the cell phone generation, and it can remind you of some things when you are on your cell phone. But just to be clear, if these items find themselves overlooked in a place of relative randomness, you know, a hammock or a book bag, a pocket, maybe a dresser drawer, that's okay too. Irrespective of where they may land, having spent a lot of time in Judges this academic year, whenever you see these amusing eyeball objects, I hope that your memory is triggered of our time together in Scripture, in Judges, particularly that, y'all know where I'm going now, you should, in those days. There was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. God speaks early on in Judges. He tells the people, his people, the Israelites, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of this land. Tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my command. See what you have done. So now I say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become adversaries to you and their gods shall be a snare to you. 
and those gods were a snare. As the Israelites, they, they played the role of a harlot, following other gods, intermarrying with those who followed other gods, and further refusing to follow the Lord. Unfortunately for them, but fortunately for us, they are, the Israelites, a case study in what not to do. It's in Judges that, as one author has put it, wickedness is democratized. Everyone does what is right in his own eyes, and the results, the author goes on to say, are disastrous. Whether it was due to passivity or not, one judge, brother by the name of Barak, completely flaked out in honoring the prophetess Deborah's word that she had received from God to kill Sisera, the general of Jabin's army. And in another instance, despite an angel of the Lord appearing to him saying, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon, another judge, similarly initially rejected the call of God to deliver Israel. And sadly, later in life, he lost his ethical marbles, and he committed what the Bible describes as idolatry. Then there's this brother named Jephthah, the rough-and-tumble Gileadite. He, he had been evicted by his hometown, only to be recruited by that same hometown to lead the people in victory over the Ammonites, and he did that. But he also went on to sacrifice his daughter on the altar of pride, Jephthah did. He, he killed her because of an entirely unnecessary and entirely selfish vow that he made. Arrogance, arrogance has been known to do that, it's been known to have that effect. And then we spent a lot of time talking about Samson. Samson, we're all very well acquainted with him now, the set-apart, consecrated Nazarite who rejected his identity at every single turn. He chose instead to be a fornicator. He chose instead to be a bully. He chose to be a hothead man-child. Samson chose to be a murderer. Safe to say, Samson has the prestigious uh, label of being the worst judge of all time. Although his story crescendos in conclusion with notes of redemption. And then in chapter 19, a perverse lot, the Bible says, of men tried to have sex with, if I could speed it up a little bit and put it in contemporary language, these men tried to gang rape another man who was out of town, and rather than stand for what was right along with his host, this Levite fell for what was wrong. And he threw his concubine, a female, to that group like leftover lesser cuts of meat. And there it was, to the shared shame of all parties, the passive bystanders who, who did nothing, or the participants, because they, they were all guilty, the group, the text says, raped her and abused her all night until the morning, until she lay dead. Judges ends with intertribal war over this very incident, which it labels was a vile outrage in Israel. But even then, even then with all the, the drama and the catastrophe and the murder and the blood and mayhem, the people of Israel, they, they just could not get right. It's fitting, but unfortunate, the last verse in the last chapter of Judges is this. Maybe you've heard it before. In those days, there was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. As I bring this series to a close and my message to a close, there, there are some people, you, you know who they are. I mean, to be honest, you may be one of them. There are some people who say that following Christ is for the immature because people who follow Jesus are weak escape artists 
who need the crutch of a patriarchal and hateful and perversely restrictive teaching that only soothes ignorance. Some people who believe this are students. Again, you, they may be you, they may be your friends. So, some of the people who believe this are adults. Nevertheless, it has been said that there is a way that seems right to a person, but in the end, it is the way to death. Refusing to believe that something, uh, refusing to believe something does not make it false. Refusing to believe something does not make it false. You can say, I don't believe in y'all are crazy. That don't mean it ain't right. I know that to you, you are probably maybe, maybe, maybe someone who enjoys the rush of walking on life's wild side. And I, I can identify with that because I was your age once. Maybe it is that you enjoy uh, this life where, where alcohol is, is mixed with energy drinks and, and then it's chased with Gatorade and that makes you feel grown up. I know, I know. I know that in today's climate, seeing nakedness everywhere, y'all say that with me, everywhere, seeing it everywhere, and, and you yourself having naked encounters seems normal. It's like, ah, it's not a big deal. You just don't understand. You old. You take life too seriously. I know, I know that you don't see the harm in slinging gossip like dope. I know, I know that, that you think life is all about balling out in every season. I know, I know, but I, but I also know that someone under the sound of my voice is just tired of being tired. And, and maybe, just maybe, they're desperate for peace. Maybe, just maybe, they're desperate for rest and for love, for a firm foundation in which they can real, realize that rust and moth and public opinion cannot erode. And if that's you, I mean, I'm, I'm just here to tell you that that is only found in God. He wants and deserves your undivided attention and your loyalty. In Christ Jesus, there is no plan B. Judges reveals our absolute brokenness, absolute, total depravity. We, we are jacked up, messed up in all ways. In 1993, a, a rapper by the, the name of Heavy D, I like him, he, he, was, he was cool. Uh, Heavy D, he, he released a song and the song is titled, you can't see what I can see. As, as you might imagine, maybe some of you have heard this before, you can Google it, uh, that's, that's the hook. And, and it's, it's you can't see what I can see. And then this dude named Flavor Flav who wear this like really big clock that looked like it, it weighed like 25 pounds. He, he kind of says at the end of the hook, uh, you know, you can't see what I can see. And then Flavor Flav says, you're blind, baby. You're blind from the facts, you're blind. So it's, you can't see what I can see. You're blind, baby. You're blind for the facts that you're blind. I, I do what I can. I do what I can. All I'm trying to say is that that is one huge lesson from Judges. You are blind. I am blind. Our eyes are not trustworthy because we are quick to call evil good and good evil whenever it benefits our flesh. But if Christ is your portion, if you trust that his love can cover a multitude of sins, if you've invited him to rule over your life, then and this is the secret here, let him rule. And the only way that you can do that is to submit to the word, his word, the Bible. Since the Bible itself says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. A Christian must be governed by a biblical worldview, which means that you have to read and study and submit to the Bible. There's a bunch of books, there's 66 of them, and we hold that truth dear. Someone used to put it like this, they, they'd hold up their Bible and they'd say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word, the, the sword of the spirit. They would say, I am what it says I am. And I have what it says I have. And then they'd get real indignant with it. And when they would say, devil, I'm armed and you should consider me dangerous. 
your spiritual vision is trash. But with the Bible and the Holy Spirit, you can live how God has called you to live. You can trust God and you can see him more clearly. Today and every day that you look at the eyeball paraphernalia that you have, my hope, my prayer is that you will choose to filter your life through the Bible, not through filters on Instagram, not through social media, not through your friends or your coworkers, but filter your life through the Bible. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord.